I would like to know about job creations. It appears to me that the jobs do not get filled with local people that need work. They are filled with union people that That's come from God knows where. And I would like to know what your views are on that. Okay, uh, we'll start with Cindy Hall on that one. Um, to repeat the question, um, she wanted to know what uh, the panel's views are on uh, local workers not being chosen for jobs, uh, but instead unionized workers being, being brought in from other areas to fill, uh, to fill jobs in this area. That's a tough one. I, I don't know how you fix that except to get rid of the unions, I suppose. Um, <laughs> hope there are no union workers here. Uh, it's not the union workers, actually, it's the union leadership that's the problem. Um, this is one of my favorite subjects, ac actually, because um, I am involved in uh, uh, starting and creating jobs, hopefully, in uh, West Virginia via Downtown Business Associations, which I've just uh, started uh, in Wheeling about, this is about the fifth month that is in existence. And uh, we are in the process of uh, making the old buildings downtown um, habitable for office space and for st storefront space. Uh, Wheeling is almost a ghost town. And so we have done research in regards to smart codes, which uh, has been used in other communities uh, across the nation. Um, and this would uh, allow us and particularly in Wheeling and West Virginia um, cities to uh, upgrade and to revitalize their downtowns. We can't now because the codes are too restrictive. Now, of course, allowing space for business businesses to move into and which uh, would create jobs and it's starting in the hometown where jobs should be starting, not with the federal government. Uh, so that that's actually one of my uh, primary uh, concentrations on uh, I have some projects uh, for West Virginia in my campaign and uh, that is one of them but we need to lift restrictions which limit job hiring and employment costs we need to reduce workmen's compensation costs and, and West Virginia is uh, is better at that they used to be the worst they're they're much better we need to encourage business development by tax credits uh, we need to create more manufacturing jobs in the United States. Everything is being sent uh, overseas. Uh, we, we need to reduce corporate taxes, uh, limit outsourcing. And of course, the, the, the reason for outsourcing is cost savings. Uh, we need to give the uh, corporations tax benefits that will keep the uh, manufacturing operations uh, within this country and talent pools, uh, the two most populous countries in the world, uh, China and India, provide huge pools from which they find talent. And we need to encourage our students to become engineers and uh, uh, technical people uh, instead of us um, having to either outsource uh, our, uh, our jobs uh, and uh, bring those back into this country. Thank you. Trish Levinson. Joining a union or not joining the union is a personal choice, and that never should be removed. Um, this is a local and state issue, and I don't believe federal government should determine what happens in this state. David McKinley. Yeah, I think that's that was more the, the way the question was. Yeah, I. Yeah, I'm an opposite it, 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 over union versus non-union. It is a local issue. It's not something for the federal government to involve. It, it relates to unionization. The car check law, the, the car check proposal has to be defeated. We don't need to have that kind of interference in the process between management and labor, how they work out their relationships with that. The, car, the, the local legislature can deal with things of prevailing wage rates that might help out in some employment versus people so they don't have to be necessarily a member of the union, but yet they can get increased salaries with that as yes, they can do that. But this is really a local issue, but what we have to do is make sure the card check does not go through. Thank you. 
Sarah Manier. A lot of federal projects, and some state projects, almost force you to hire union workers. It's in the con uh, the contract, and uh, and of course our prevailing wage rate is higher than the federal mandate. The only way you're going to solve this problem, really, to make it a level playing field for everyone, is to become a right-to-work state. That's the only way you can do it. And uh, with the current makeup of the uh, uh, state legislature, with the House and the Senate, it's not going to happen. I'd like to tell you it would. But with the makeup of the way it is, the, the majority leader in the House, it's a union boss. And the majority leader of the House is the one that introduced car check in 2007 in the state legislature. <coughs> so some of the problems can be fixed right here at home if you just vote these people out. I mean, I don't, you, you, if, you're, if you're in a hole and you keep digging, you're going to stay in the hole. And the only way you can change it is to vote differently. And I think the people are waking up. And I think we're going to see some tremendous changes on the local, the state, and the federal level in 2010 and 2012. And if we don't, we're all going to be in trouble. Thank you. I'll start. With regard to the situation the way it is now, it is far more than a state problem because the federal government has gotten their fingers into things that they don't belong in. The Department of Labor has become a protection mechanism for the unions and for union management. One of the first things that uh, Barack Obama did 